free our people. Ten years ago, in September of 2003, the Adapt Free Our People march began with a rally at the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia. Over 150 civil rights activists headed out into the pouring rain for the U.S. Capitol, 144 miles away. A 14-day adventure to stop people with disabilities from being locked away in nursing facilities and institutions. Following the passage of the American with Disabilities Act in 1990, ADAPT, the nation's largest grassroots direct action disability rights organization, focused on ending the institutional bias in Medicaid. The federal program funds expensive institutions almost exclusively for necessary services, forcing people who need those services out of the community, away from families, and behind closed doors. In reality, we are marching for our lives, our freedom, said Bob Liston, the March co-chair. We are marching for people in nursing homes and people at risk of being in an institution. Each day, the group marched between 4 and 16 miles, eating communal meals and sleeping most days in tents, a bunkhouse, a church, and an ice skating rink in Baltimore. The second day was the longest of the march, over 16 miles into Delaware. About 20% of the power chairs just could not make it all the way on the long hilly trek and were picked up by vans along the route where they stopped. On the third day, Vice President Joe Biden, then Senator Biden, joined the marchers at a rally in downtown Wilmington at Rodney Square Park to cheer the group on. The most expensive thing to do is to put people into institutions. To those that say we cannot afford to do this, said Biden, I say we cannot afford not to do this. When my wife and I talk about attendant services, they just see me as a politician. When they see you on this march, they begin to get it and understand. While the line of Free Our People marchers was a visible symbol of the dedication of ADAPT activists to end the institutional bias, it was the individual experiences that demonstrated the great commitment of each person on the march. I was in a nursing home for eight years. I was forced to move in when my parents divorced, said Ken, Ken, Karen Burrison of Philadelphia. I saw people that got married in the nursing home and still had to live in separate rooms. My mother did not understand why I wanted out. She said, you get 24-hour care in there and don't have to worry about paying the bills. I said, Mom, I want a life, and you can't have a life in a nursing home. Now that I'm out, I have a home and a family. The personal attendants on the march started early. They had the task every morning of helping each person get up and ready for the march that day. To keep on schedule, the entire group had to be out on the street ready to go by 9 a.m. The organization was meticulous. The time for getting up in the morning revolved around the recharging schedule of the power chairs. Each night, the arrangement of recharging would rotate so the same people were not asked to wake up at 4.30 a.m. The Free Our People March would stop for about an hour each day for a lunch break at a park, an open lot, or parking area along the side of the road. Accessible, portable toilets on a flatbed truck followed the march each stop. After dinner in the camp, the entire group would gather together for a debriefing of the day and plan for the next day's march. The meeting had a family feel to it and often included more comedy than productive suggestions. Most nights, Bob Kafka would take time to read email support messages from around the country to activists. Every night, about 80 power chairs had to be fully recharged for the next day's march. It was an odd sight to look out at a sea of empty power wheelchairs. In Baltimore, the Free Our People March would add another 61 activists to the long line. The reinforcements stayed at a downtown hotel and received an overview of what life would be like on the final leg of the march to Washington, D.C. The plan in the morning was for the two groups to meet in the Inner Harbor at McKeldon Square, where ADAPT would hold another rally. The main group came into Baltimore, and rather than set up camp, the group would sleep out on a concrete floor of the Patterson Field ice skating rink. The group called it the bubble because the domed roof over the rink. The floor of the bubble was cold and damp. The humidity was high due to the rain. In the morning, adapt activists woke up to an eerie fog lit by soft green lights. As people gradually woke up to get ready to go, the fog slowly melted away and soaked the floor and everything on the floor. 
Bob Kafka looked over the surreal environment and named it Lake Adapt. Being in a nursing home sucks and I want out, said Linda Merkel at the rally in Baltimore's Inner Harbor. Linda lived in a nursing home and was working with the Maryland Adapt at the time to get back into the community. My son was taken away. I want out. I want my life back, she said. Following the rally, lunch in the square, the Free Our People March snaked through the urban milieu in the pouring rain. On the twelfth day of the march, with less than 20 miles to go, the Free Our People March faced the greatest crisis. A sudden thunderstorm soaked the individual chargers that were necessary to recharge the power chairs. The generator was made to weather storms, but each wheelchair had its own AC charger that was not typically used outdoors. The ADAPT activists met in the dark to consider the options. An inventory of power available at the time estimated that only a dozen wheelchairs had enough power to make it about halfway. Several ADAPT marchers volunteered to work all night on the problem. The charging units were taken to a nearby fire department to be inspected and dried. Many people had gone to bed thinking the prognosis on the charging of the power chairs was grim. Most believed that after coming 120 miles, the march was going to be shuttled in vans to the next site. At 9 a.m., however, when the Maryland State Troopers were ready to go, most of the wheelchairs were on the street. We're going to make it no matter what, said Nancy Salandra, the co-chair of the march. You have to take a risk. That's what it's all about. ADAPT celebrated reaching Washington, D.C. The final day would be a march of just over four miles to the Upper Senate Park. The march would meet up with a Free Our People train that came from New York, picking up more activists in Philadelphia for a huge rally at the U.S. Capitol. Stephanie Thomas. This is not about any one person, but about how we work together. We will do it and we will be pretty great. Adam Nielsen. I don't want this to end. Jennifer McPhail. There is something about marching with this group of people that makes you feel good even after 140 miles. For all of the gnarliness of this trip, we are very beautiful when we want to be. Barbara Toomer, stay to the right. Let the photographers get killed. Just keep to the right. Observer on the side of the road. I saw you all down the road and thought I was looking at the largest fully integrated work release gang. Jim Etzel on day one. I hope we don't get too wet. David Witte. For some people, this will be a walk in the park. For others, it will be the hardest thing they have ever done. I just want to be somewhere in the middle. Kurt Breslau. All of the bad things that you have heard about nursing homes, they are all true. And then some. You just don't know unless you are in there. Yoshiko Dart. You are the loudest voices of empowerment. The revolutionaries of the 21st century. You are America the Beautiful. We will continue to march and fight to the end of time to free our people. Senator Tom Harkin. The door needs to be open so that people will have choices. It's long past time that people could be in their own homes, not somebody else's nursing home. Since the Free Our People March in September of 2003, over 75% of Mikasa legislation that ADAPT so passionately supported has been made into federal law, mostly through the Money Follows the Person legislation and the Affordable Care Act. The idea of Mikasa is, a, is proven to be effective, but the part that remains to be realized is the end of the institutional bias. Most U.S. states have made some progress to give people more choices to stay in their home, live with their families, and be part of the diverse American community. Expensive nursing homes are a federal Medicaid benefit, while home and community services and supports are optional state programs that can be cut by the state in tough economic times. The loud chants of the Free Our People March are still needed today. ADAPT is working nationally to, com to completely pass MICASA, now called the Community Choice Act, your help is needed and your talents are welcome. Do you want to live in a nursing home? Tim Wheat has been an ADAPT member for over 17 years. His role of documenting the national ADAPT actions on the ADAPT website, adapt.org, has positioned him as the chair of the ADAPT History Committee. 
Tim's photography of civil rights action have created a large disability rights archive of the tremendous dedication of ADAPT activists all over the country. Mr. Wheat has four photographs in the January 2013 issue of The Progressive. I am an ADAPT activist first, said Tim Wheat about his civil rights work. The passion and determination of my brothers and sisters in this movement is the amazing image that I wish everyone could see. Tim Wheat is currently the community organizer for the Center for People with Disabilities in Boulder, Colorado. He began at the Memphis Center for Independent Living in 1996, where he photographed more than 1,700 violations of the Fair Housing Act and was part of one of the largest fair housing complaints concerning accessibility. In 2002, Tim rode his bicycle around the United States to document independent living, creating a web journal called Independence Across America. Tim has worked as a volunteer with the Student Conservation Association in Alaska following the Valdez spill and is a graduate of the University of Alabama.